Hi, this is Matt Hug with Think NP's Backstage Pass, and today we have with us Katie Conley, president of Best Principled Solutions. And Katie is a leadership coach and organizational development consultant, and welcome. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks, Matt. I appreciate the opportunity. Well, I'll tell you, I am so excited when Katie uh, said she would be with us because we've known each other for a while, and um, you're not somebody that uh, uh, I have to draw out. <laughs> no, Katie's uh, um, a really good uh, person who does a lot of interesting work, and I knew her um, uh, expertise would be really valuable for everybody. In fact, let me uh, read a bit of your bio here, because uh, I, uh, I really think this is, this is good. Uh, I did not know so much about her. Uh, you have a vast amount, and I would say a hands-on experience in a lot of different kinds of nonprofits, particularly the arts, I noticed. Mm -hmm. You really do a lot of uh, uh, interesting things there. I imagine that's your own passion, right? It is very definitely my own passion. <laughs> there you are. Uh, so uh, that includes arts and education programs, uh, youth uh, education um, for uh, adjudicated youth, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's really important. Uh, creating mentoring in, the, in arts programs for at-risk youth, social enterprise initiatives, such as the creation of two different art galleries. One is a co-op. That's super. Uh, you serve on the Pennsylvania Council of the Arts. Uh, you have uh, done work on numerous grant panels, I noticed. Mm -hmm. um, and then and art in itself, I see that you've uh, uh, worked with jazz festivals. Uh, you have here that uh, for one, took one from three and a half days to 10 days from 18 to 138 events. Right, that was the Berks Jazz Fest, yeah. Wow, that's great, that, that's, that's really that cool. a lot of work and a lot of volunteers. Oh, I'll bet. The community really <laughs> backed us on that. That's, uh, and, and to uh, have so many events, that meant you had to get a lot of people there to, to support them too. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, uh, let's see, major workshops uh, and youth programs uh, serve as an advocate testifying at legislative hearings uh, for more than 300 arts organizations, produce monthly TV show, um, producing major award ceremonies for a televised uh, BETJ magazine. Uh, served as uh, a re-granting partner for a five and a half county wide region for over a million population. And uh, you've grown an organization, I think this is particularly uh, uh, good to note, from $29,000 uh, in, in the hole. So you were back in the negative for $29,000 right. to $1.7 million uh, in cash flow in uh, just seven years. And that's super. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's, that's the little carrot that they hang out. They don't, oh, we have a $144,000 budget. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Can I see the books, please? Yeah. Can I see the books, please? Oh, we're in the hole and the grants are all gone. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now let's start from like less than zero. Um, and, you know, deservedly so. You've uh, been recognized as a woman to watch uh, and a greater Lehigh Valley woman of influence and a woman of distinction in the Philadelphia market. Uh, I think that's, uh, that, like I said, well deserved. Uh, you've uh, served as a founder and president of the NAWBO. The National Association of Women Business Owners. There you go. Uh, uh, and in Greater Philadelphia. In Greater Philadelphia. And it was an entrepreneurial foundation that mm. we created. And they now have uh, branched off and they produce a program that is um, dedicated towards youth um, business development. Okay. So they have a competition similar right. to sort of like Shark Tank. Ah, okay. And they have children um, right. in the senior, junior, senior years. Okay. Um, and they pitch the program. They learn how to market it. They mm. do all these fabulous things. And then they win. There's a prize. And then that is a national program. So right. then that individual goes on to the national program. And um, the, oh, that's cool. the winner that's been doing the most um, is a young man that has come up with some sporty ties. Oh, okay. Um, so he's doing pretty well for himself. That's really cool. That yeah. sounds, uh, and, and it's uh, a good way of getting uh, young people kind of ingrained into what it takes 
to make a business work. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, um, and I could go on, and you have a, a lot of things here that are, uh, and I'll just pick out a couple more here. Uh, you uh, graduate from two comprehensive board management training programs, Leadership Tri-County and Leadership Berks, uh, Secretary of uh, the County Redevelopment Authority, a Majority Judge of Elections, and... <laughs> you have a GSD, right? <laughs> Which is get stuff done. <laughs> yeah, forget all the other things. You know, that's the most important thing exactly. that if you if you call on me, um, I like to get stuff done. Well, there you go. And uh, and one of the things you're going to get done this spring is going to the White House. Yes. Uh, and that sounds really exciting. It sounds like a lot of fun. It is exciting. Um, you know, this will be the sixth time that I'm going. Mm -hmm. um, it's through Advocacy for the Arts. Okay. The Americans for the Arts, and uh, it's an opportunity for us to visit with the legislators and to tell them specifically um, what programs are working, what programs are not working, and then oh. um, certain people are invited into the Blue Room, right? Um, me being one of them, and then we meet <laughs> with uh, some of the cabinet representatives to talk about um, what have they discovered as far as arts and healing goes, mm. as far as arts and aging goes, uh, with Alzheimer's in particular, okay. and sundowner syndrome. Mm. Um, yes. If you introduce certain aspects of music right. to people when the sun starts to go down, mm -hmm. and you bring them back to the times when they were listening to music, they will stay with you longer. Sure, sure. Um, if they're dancing, um, how can you get them uh, re-engaged in dancing. And that physicality helps with their memory yes, issues and all that. Yes, it does, yeah. it does. The ones that remain the brightest and, and the longest with you and the most attentive mm -hmm. tend to be individuals who were engaged in the arts during their youth. Mm -hmm. So to all the school district districts out there cutting your arts <laughs> programs, please stop. Um, <laughs> it's a lifetime skill. It's, it's a not lifetime a, skill. Right. And then even work with veterans um, mm. with PTSD um, mm -hmm. and how the, uh, the arts are helping some of them to uh, heal quicker. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's great. So tell me, I mean, how did you start this kind of work? Well, let's see, even before you get that far, what kind? How do you describe the kind of consulting you do? I mean, I said, you know, we said leadership coach and organizational development consultant, but what's that mean? So what it really means is that um, I help people who are stuck. Mm -hmm. okay? Every, okay. Everyone is a leader in some way. Right. You have to wake up every morning. You have to lead yourself somewhere. Okay. Are you leading yourself off a cliff mm. or are you putting a parachute on? Okay. Or are you not even putting yourself in that realm of danger? Right. You know, so how can you be um, aware of what is going on for yourself and your behaviors and the impact that your behaviors has on other individuals okay. as a leader? Um, not necessarily a title, yeah. not necessarily a manager, a mm -hmm. supervisor, or any of that kind of yeah. stuff. You don't need a title to be a leader. You just need to know that in your heart you're doing the right thing. You're not hurting anybody, and you're leading people somewhere. Right, right. You're taking yourself and others yes, along, along with right. us. So right. you have a compelling vision. You can articulate mm -hmm. that compelling vision. It's not just in your head. So so when you do all this, how, how do you, uh, I guess, Really, the question is, where's the, it's nice to be able to talk about this, where's the income in this? So the income is in facilitating conversations. Okay. Um, oftentimes people will say to me, um, I want to develop a culture in my company. Okay. We get along well. Right. Um, but when I hear about Apple and I hear about Google and I hear about some of these other companies, they talk about their culture. Mm. And I don't necessarily know that we have a culture. Okay. So when you start exploring the culture, you have to start looking at what are the collective values? How will people treat each other? Mm -hmm. The whole thing about... Um, oh, I don't, wanna, I don't want to develop leaders. I want to develop sales team. Well, right. you, know, you want to develop a sales right. team, right. but you want them to be leaders. You want them to <laughs> be doing ethical things, to mm -hmm. be doing the right thing, not to hurt anybody, not to make promises that can't be delivered. Um, and developing somebody's leadership isn't challenging your own. And I think there, there's a big issue there, isn't there? It is. Yeah. 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 I mean, you can challenge yourself, 
but um, because you have to be self-aware, you ha it, it, oh, it yeah. turns it reflects the mirror back on yourself. Right. So you learn about button pushing. Who mm. pushes your buttons at what time? Right. Um, where do you make time for yourself during the day? Mm -hmm. How do you find those pockets? Because um, if you don't put the mask, the oxygen mask on yourself first <laughs> right, when you're yeah, going down, exactly. you're not going to be able to help anybody. Yep. So how do you help to put the oxygen mask on yourself first mm -hmm. at work so that you can be of benefit, you can listen fully, mm. not only to the words, but to who is saying it. Right. Um, right. You know, a lot of people think that they get paid by the number of words they spew forth. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they just keep spewing. Right, right. And, um, As opposed to saying that, you know, I have one mouth and two ears, use them proportionally, <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, and then there's a sage mm. that will pop up and he says 12 words or she says 12 words and it's like, bingo, right yeah. there it is. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's what we needed to hear. We didn't need all this other, you know, highfalutin'-y. Um, we just needed somebody to nail it on the head. So, um, uh, so then your business is engaging nonprofits and other organizations to go through a process that takes them this way. How, how do uh, how do these places uh, recognize they need your service? Um, typically, it will come in when there's a succession plan or ah. a transition. Okay. Or All somebody right. says. I hear about strategic planning, but I'm not quite sure what it is. Okay. Now, times have changed also sure. um, since I first, you know, graduated from school and was, <laughs> uh, you know, employed by my first nonprofit. Mm -hmm. um, but there are still some, um, a lot of the nonprofits that are around still have founders that yes. are running oh, yeah. them. Well, and new ones start every day, right. And, and so how are the founders going to leave the program so that they can continue to be successful when the founders leave right and not flounder yes um so people hear about those kinds of things and then i also wrote a book on hmm. non about nonprofit management so people okay. sometimes right. know about the book um and I'm, the title is um engaging your board it's raining in okay <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Let's get a plug in there. It's not a problem. <laughs> Let's do that. Yeah, because I always envision myself going out on stage and singing, It's raining in. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and having all this money dripping down. What did I tell you guys, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but every nonprofit would love to have that happen for them. Mm -hmm. But how do you go about doing it? Right. You know, and right. people complain, My board doesn't. Mm. Well, if your board doesn't, it's your job to help your board do. Yes. So it's your responsibility to help your board uh, gain the knowledge that they need to have to be the best board members that they can be. So what are you doing? It's a two-way street. And, and as a consultant, you get in and, and help them realize what that is and where they need to make those adjustments. Yeah, and, and sometimes I'll get called in because they want a fundraising platform mm. or they want to, to know what they should be doing more to fundraise. And then the fundraising, Unfortunately, tags on to governance. Oh, huge, you know, yes. So then I might tiptoe over into governance, and then it's like, no, we didn't hire you to do governance. We hired you to do fundraising. Sure. And it's like, okay. Yeah, yeah. But know that you need to have that governance piece oh. sealed down. Yeah. Um, because a lot of board members say that they will do anything for you but fundraise. Right, yeah, yeah. And, uh, because that's like this big scary thing. Um, but they'll sell a can of bro cream to somebody in the shaving department. You know, they can sell that. So what is the difference just to ask somebody to come along to... Uh, yeah, to be part of, the, of your mission. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, so how did you get into this? What, what, was, uh, what was the moment you said to yourself, you know, I want to be a consultant? Um, I want to be a consultant... Um, was when I was um, I was hired as an interim transitional executive director for a, an international organization. That had you like uh, left a position before that, and you were like between things. Uh huh. Okay. And um, once I got in there and started going through paperwork, there was a lot of things that needed to be done. Sure. They were shocked by some of them. Mm. Um, 
some of my suggestions were not being followed and I could not continue with the organization. Let's just right. leave it at that. No, that makes sense. I mean, it's, it's this is the, uh, you know, you can lead the horse to water syndrome that a lot of times we see. Right, yeah. right. So um, I was the bearer of bad news, mm -hmm. you know, and it just, it was not a good place to be. So right. um, then I started interviewing again with other organizations, but Nonprofits tend to come from a place of scarcity. Yes. As opposed to abundance. This is true. And Many so do. Yeah. they people would call me up on the telephone to begin with an interview, you know, a telephone interview and can you knock your salary down a little bit? And it was like, No, I can't. Mm. Um, Good for you. And I, <laughs> and and then after so many of those then I started thinking, people were like, S can you come help us with this particular aspect of our work? Can you help me with this particular aspect of my work? And so I said to my husband, who I had recently married, um, and he moved to Philadelphia and sold his practice of 30 years to be with me in Philadelphia for my last job. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it was my last job. Your last paycheck job. <laughs> my last paycheck job. <laughs> right. Um, and we agreed that I would begin to educate myself more completely hmm. around the skills of consulting and the skills of coaching. And, and so okay. um, the training piece comes in there, speaking comes in there, um, sure. Coaching comes in there, and then consulting comes in. So it's a wow. It's a four pronged fork. Right. So you kind of almost eased into it uh, because these other opportunities weren't looking like what you really wanted to do, in term or they couldn't pay you or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. my background is in behavioral science. I see. Okay. So I'm always a curious person about what motivates people. Right. And how do you get people to do things? Mm. And okay. um, I have a difficult time saying no, but I realize that upon occasion, you just need to. Yeah. Um, you know, who's going to get hurt by whatever action it is that we're going to take? Right. And then to move forward from there. Um, if nobody's going to get hurt, then how are we going to fund that program? Right. Um, okay. And then if we fund that program, is that going to take funding away from any of our other programs? So. Mm -hmm. In the role of a consultant, um, I can support individuals in discovering what the steps are that they want specifically. Right. So I ask them questions, you know, a lot of questions. And in the role of coaching, it's not necessary. In consulting, I will provide for them some guidance, some specific guidance. Right. In coaching, you encourage the individual to discover their own answers. Right. So there's a little bit of a difference there. And sometimes I have to say to somebody, do you mind if I take off my coaching hat for a minute and put on my consulting hat and yeah. let me reflect on what I, it is that I hear you saying? I hear you saying this, this, and this. Um, I hear you saying that you have tried this. Let's think about other things that you could try. So uh, now, interesting you bring this up because in a, uh, do you find that a lot of your, your consulting clients really need coaching, like they have the answers and, and you just need to bring them along? Mm -hmm. And the other way around, do you, you see, I mean, obviously, and that's what you just said was you took a, some of you were coaching and said, okay, now listen, I need to tell you something here. Do you flip back and forth a lot or do you try to maintain that consistency? Well, there's a lot of limiting beliefs that people have. Mm. I could never do that. Yes. Why not? Right. What's right. holding you back? Yep. What would that look like if you would have that conversation? Right. What would the worst thing be? Yeah. What would the worst result be? Nobody's going to shoot you mm -hmm. for asking that question. So let's talk about what the possible answers are. Let's choreograph that conversation. Right. You know, which is when I was a, when I was leading organizations and I knew that there were fretful decisions that needed to come up. Mm -hmm. I would choreograph conversations with some of my board members beforehand okay. and the committees um, to make sure that everybody was comfortable with what the final decisions were that were going to be made and right. for them to see the the good of the whole thing. You know, um, introducing rap to um, board members who have their noses slightly <laughs> elevated. Um, you know, introducing a rap component because yeah. 
that's what the kids are doing. And so right. if we have the right. kids participate in a positive rap contest, yeah. we let them go to the band shell where we have this other series of concerts. We let them come up there. Then they're, they become familiar with the band shell series, you know? Mm -hmm. So how can we help to bring the arts to where people are because not everybody can shoot a hoop, not everybody can bat a ball, Yeah, yeah. Um, but most people can either open a curtain or take a ticket or they play an instrument or they may be able to dance or they may be able to act or, you know, just wherever yeah, so it give, is that they can so, fit in. So give them a different perspective and, and you're doing this while you're working with the client to right. make that. Right. happen right. right exactly yeah yeah that's that's fascinating so when you um h how does all this compare if like between for-profit and non-profit business in for-profit um you know the the bottom line is always the dollars and cents that right. motivates people mm -hmm. and nonprofits are starting to realize that they need to adopt some more basic business principles as well sure well we're nonprofit we don't have to make money <laughs> Wrong. Well, you have you to know. say solvent. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's talk about you know, that. Eject, right. You know, manna does not fall from heaven. <laughs> you know, not anymore. Not for the right. salaries. Yeah, right. You know, paychecks are due this week. How are you going to pay people? Yes. You know, so um, being realistic about what it is that you're going to do also. And, and then helping to educate people too. You know, mm. people that would sign on for concerts or we would bring artists into their facility and they would say, well, I don't have to pay you because you're a nonprofit and mm. um, you have a budget. And I'm like, well, you have a budget. Yeah, right. <laughs> so nonprofit means that I have to turn the money back over into programs right. or hold right. it in reserves. But it doesn't mean that I cannot meet my expenses and then hopefully gain some money to either expand programs or to develop some other mm -hmm. aspects of what it is that we are doing. So it sounds like you fight a lot of times the, the perception of what a nonprofit is and how the finances work, whereas in business it's much more clear. Uh, yeah, to some. Yeah, well, right. And, and, and even in business, you okay. know, people are... I've seen many times also um, key nonprofit organizations or clubs and associations bring business people in mm. as the leader after a very strong leader, potential founder, you know, former founder has left. Right. They've been there for 25 years. They bring somebody in. They, um, they fail. Mm. So then they bring somebody else in and it's somebody who was on the board and it's somebody who did well in a particular area in their own firm mm -hmm. that they did really well in and they excelled in. But that person was given a budget. He didn't yeah. have to raise the money. Yeah. Or she right. didn't have to raise the money. She just knew she had, you know, $64 million to be able to pr produce these services. You know, so how are you going to produce these services? So when people look at figures on a on a piece of paper how do you make them dance you know right. how do you how do you bring them to life so that you not necessarily that you're money driven um because, but you're aware. But some people used to say, okay, here comes Katie. How much is that going to cost, Connolly? Um, <laughs> because, because people kept telling me at the Arts Council, well, you need to do this. You need to do that. And I'd be like, me and what army? <laughs> yeah, right, right. And worse. <laughs> <laughs> Who else is going to be helping me yeah. that I need to do this? Why do we need to do this? Mm -hmm. We already have our programs discussed for the year. Yeah. We have a very solid plan for the year. We also included... A flexible program that if somebody did introduce somebody something that we would look at it and there was a process and a procedure to go through that so you're adopting some of the the business methodologies absolutely but within that nonprofit context yes yeah yeah uh, I mean it, uh, so when somebody comes to you and um, and says I want to work with you because it sounds you know you have so much you really do have a lot to offer somebody what what makes you think they're going to work out for me and the or they're not going to work out for me what's your ideal client that way so my ideal client is to discover that they will actually walk with me through the proposal process ah. that they're not just going for three proposals 
Okay. And they already have somebody picked out. So that they, they so have, uh, I, I like if it's a, for a uh, funding process of right. some sort. Right. Okay. Or a strategic planning process. Right. Okay. Right. Um, so they want three quotes. Mm. They want three bids. Right. Okay. Well, I'll give you a bid, but I put a lot of forethought into that. Yeah. So the only way I'll give you a bid is if you permit me to deliver the bid in person with a number of, p of other decision makers. Now, see, that's interesting because uh, you, you, I mean, this is a good answer, but you've approached it differently than a lot of folks do because this is a, um, a conundrum for a lot of people in our work which is that they, somebody says, well, I want you to bid on a project and you know you are, and sometimes you don't know, which is even more frustrating because they, they'll end up at the other end say, picking somebody else. And you didn't know there was a competition going on. Uh, and uh, you know, what makes you decide, so, so you're saying that if somebody's willing to walk with you through that process and let you present, then you'll do the bidding. But if they don't, you're just not going to spend time writing up something and then give it to them. Right. Or if there's so much interference that other board members are contacting me, mm. that this particular board member that was supposed to be the only contact I had in the beginning, um, they're indicating that that person is speaking off cord. Right. Um, if there's too much interference before I even begin, I will step away from the car. Mm. Okay. <laughs> All right. Run, Forrest! <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so you have to be mindful of what those things are because you will have the energy sucked right out of you. Yes. Um, if someone isn't clear with what it is that they want. Right. So right. helping to um, circle the wagons, oftentimes I will say you need to circle the wagons first. Right. So we're all on board. If this is going to be a team development exercise, if you want your team to be doing something differently, who is on your team? And, and what is it that you want them to accomplish by the end? All right. Well, then you've got to participate in that too. Mm. You can't, you didn't hire me to be an HR representative to tell the person that you don't like the way that they dress. You don't like the way that they're presenting themselves. Right. Um, they do very well in fundraising, but they don't necessarily, you know, go out and represent the company in the manner that you want. You're their boss. I'm not the boss. So you're, you're hiring me to coach that person right. through difficulties. The difficulties that person's going to be telling me may be different than the difficulties you're telling me. You have to have a conversation with that person. So you're suggesting that the engagement process is an indicator of how the uh, getting the you know, the process up to actually signing the contract mm -hmm. is an indicator of how it's going to be after that you sign the contract. Absolutely. And and that's really giving you, putting up your antenna saying this is going to be a good client or not a good client. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, somebody will call me and say, we want to start a nonprofit and it's going to, well, this is a true story where it's going to be for autism. Well, mm -hmm. a couple years ago, autism organizations were popping up all over the place. Yeah, that's right. You know, so what are you going to offer that's different than the autism organization that's down the street from you? Right. Well, the, right. The, our organization will really take care of the needs of my child. Well, well that's, that's good. <laughs> but, that's good, <laughs> right. but you can't, that's kind of self-promotion. Yes. You know, you can't necessarily do that. How will you help to benefit other children? Do you know that other children have symptoms that are similar to your daughter? Yeah. Um, or son. Or different. Or different. You have to deal with those too. Right. Yeah. And and because what are your guidelines gonna be? Right. You have so, to have some kind of guidelines. So it's almost like you're you're consulting into like a pre consulting into the, the contract that way. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of questions. Yeah, yeah. That's fascinating. So in your opinion then, what's the best way to find clients? Um the best way for me to find clients is typically word of mouth. Okay. Um, I, co I conduct workshops. I do trainings. Mm -hmm. um, you have your book. I have my book. I do articles. I write articles. Um, and I find people that way, or I sponsor different events and give mm. three minutes to talk, and somebody will say, uh, and I give away things. You know, like I'll give right. away, I have a nonprofit. Um, scholarship program for coaching. So it's a oh. reduced fee for three months for coaching. Okay. So um, I give that, you know, 
Yeah. I let people be aware of that. Um, and then they'll come on for more. But mm -hmm. um, it has to still be a benefit to me as well. Right. right. Um, and we're pretty clear cut in terms of what the expectations are. Then, then to be specific about what the expectations are. So somebody isn't off thinking that the world is going to be saved because whatever actions we're going to take is going to yeah. save the world. Not necessarily so. And also, so it, it defines, it, they get some value out of it. And it's not just three months of a perpetual sales call <laughs> for them, but it's right. they're getting something out of it, you're getting something out of it, and the organization is benefiting from it. Right. Uh, yeah. So that's, that's fascinating that you have a lot of uh, multi-prong approach, but then all comes down to Oh, I heard Katie at that event uh, you, telling somebody that maybe they're the right person for their organization. Uh, yeah, so, exactly. And, yeah. you know, through social media sometimes, too, somebody will mm -hmm. say, um, you know, m my friend is going through a situation. Is this something that you might be able to help them with? And I'll say, well, mm. I, I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, you know, I'd yeah. be willing to ex have a, an exploratory conversation. When can we set it up? So when, what's the most important thing that people should know when they get into consulting to nonprofits? Uh, the most important thing to know is to listen, is mm. to really to listen, um, to listen, because there's a lot of things that aren't said. Okay. There's a lot of things that are said, but there are things that aren't said. Yeah. So what are the things that aren't said? Or what are the things that are most emphatic? They may throw some little zinger in there that that zinger is really the piece that that's is the causing issue. yeah yeah that's right. causing all this other craziness. Um, so how do you help them to realize right. that? But being perceptive enough to understand that that's the issue there, and it's not all this obfuscation that's going on. Right. Yeah, and discerning cause and effect. It sounds like. Yeah. Wow. That's really cool. Well, is there anything else that you think people ought to know when they work with nonprofits? Anything that, that comes to mind that maybe we didn't cover? Um, so working with nonprofits is a labor of love. Yeah. Um, there's a little more education sometimes, and, and, and different executive directors have gotten upset with me when I've said that, you know, most of us are overworked and underpaid. Mm -hmm. And um, I find no fault in that. I mean, you know, I, I'm, I not was trying, there. I'm trying to figure out why they would get upset at you saying that, <laughs> but sure. <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe they just were having a bad day. Yeah. I tend maybe they maybe they're overpaid and I, underworked. Yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> tend to speak from my heart, you know. Sometimes and that's I get, a good way of characterizing. Get, let's let's, yeah. let's stick with that. I get myself <laughs> in trouble, um, but I'll speak a, about the experiences that I've had. So mm. this this is my experience. It may not right. be your experience, but yeah. this has been my experience. Mm -hmm. And as I've served in different communities, not only working for the organizations that I've worked with, but I've also served on different boards or different yeah. task forces. Um, I believe that it is everyone's job to be involved in their communities right. um, in some way. You know, so how can you do that? So I continue to be involved with elections and I'm now mm -hmm. on the rec board up in the little township that I live in. Sure. You know, just to, to start to get to see how is our township running. Right. Um, and understand some of the water issues and the well issues and those kinds of things, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, but to be involved, to keep your ears open and your eyes open. Yeah. And to be yeah. a curious person. <laughs> yep. To be curious yeah. about yeah. how is it that you have come up with that particular thought. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, help me to understand what it is that you're trying to say. Because that, that gets back to that little zinger you were talking about, and how that might be the most important thing in right. the whole conversation. Yeah. You know, you you told me you wanted me to come in here to take care of this. We have spent exactly thirty seconds on this. Yeah. Most of the conversation has been on those other things. Right. Do you want to talk about those other things, or are you hiring me to just take care of this thirty-second blip? Right. Right. In the last half hour of our conversation. Yeah, yeah, that's you know? great. 
that really makes a difference. Well, Katie, this has been a pleasure talking to you. <laughs> I really, uh, I knew that uh, uh, we'd have a really good conversation about things and you brought out so much. Thank you so much for being with us well, today. Thank you, Matt. This is really a blessing for people, I think, that you're providing this opportunity for them to discover how they can be the best consultants they can be and yeah. for nonprofits to take advantage of the wealth of knowledge that other consultants have as well. Yeah, I think it's huge. I think it's uh, an area that uh, if, if consultants do their job right, nonprofits can really shine. Well, everybody, thank you so much for being with us. This is Matt Hug and Katie Conley, and this has been Backstage Pass with ThinkNP.